Welcome everyone. These are some of the supplies that you're going to be provided. You have a canvas board here that will be provided. You'll have your paint set that will be provided that has the three brushes inside with all the paints. Extras that you're going to need. Um, you can use just regular paper towels. You can use napkins, whatever you have available. Um, for water cups, I've used um, empty yogurt cups. I've used empty sour cream cups. You can use regular cups. Here's one that already has water in it, so you can decide. Um, and you'll need some kind of paper plate to put your paints on. Um, from there, we'll get started and I'll show you how we're going to paint our painting. Okay, to start off this painting, you're going to want to get your white paint. As you notice, the lids, when you take them off, they look like they're closed. If you take the end cap, you can see there's a little puncture thing that you can puncture it to open it up. Once you do that, you'll be able to bring your paint out and put it onto your paper plate. I actually call that a palette, so I'll tell my students, put your paint on your palette. The three colors you're gonna want to have is white, yellow, and your orange. Um, make sure you puncture each one of them um, so that that way you can get paint out of each one. I always like to put my lids back on. Sometimes your paints will dry out. We're not going to be painting long enough for that to happen, but that's just a good habit to get into. Okay, there's different brushes. This is a flat brush that's a little bit wider. There's another flat brush and then your round. We're going to use the widest flat brush to start with. Okay, first you dip into your white. You just wherever you want your sun to be, just create a white circle to be your starting sun. Next, I'm going to be using some yellow and going around that white circle. Now, if you happen to paint over the white circle, that's okay. You can always bring white back over top. That's not a big deal. Keep painting your white and spread it out. I like to smooth it out so it's not very clumpy. This brush is a little smaller, so just fan it out and smooth it out the best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. No painting is ever perfect. Um, I just keep spreading out the yellow a fair amount of distance, and then we're gonna start adding our other orange color to this. So just keep fanning it blending it the best you can and have fun with it. Okay, when you start adding this color, it's going to look really dark next to that yellow. So I'm gonna add some more yellow in with it to lighten it up. Um, as you start spreading it out, you'll notice I'm adding more yellow. The more yellow you add to it, the more it'll lighten up that darker orange and blend it in. Don't get too nervous about it being so dark next to that yellow. You can always bring in more yellow afterwards and go over top of it. Just blend it the best you can. If you can't get it the way that it looks smooth, that's okay. You can add texture to it, which means a lot of brush strokes. If you have a lot of brush strokes where these colors are at, then that's the style of your painting and it looks great. So right now I'm just working on blending it the best I can. Um, always bringing in that yellow to try to blend it and just keep blending it. You can see I've got a lot of paint brush strokes because I do want some of that little bit of texture. The other good thing about this is as you're painting, if you don't like it, you can let it dry and start all over again. So you can see I'm leaving a lot of brush strokes all over. That's the kind of texture I like to have. 
Some of you might like it more smooth where it's blended in a nice gradient. It's just kind of your preference what you prefer. Okay, here I'm adding that darker orange again. Again, just trying to blend it the best I can. Always adding that yellow to lighten it up a teeny bit and blend it the best. The brush strokes for the texture, if you want to keep that or blend it smooth, whichever your preference is. I'm going to keep working it darker and darker going towards that left side and just keep blending. And note that I do want to add that if you are trying to blend it into a smooth blend, um, it does take more time. The more time you take, your paint can start to dry and it'll be more difficult to get those blends. So the quicker you work, the easier it will be to blend. Alright, make sure you're rinsing your brush out before you start new colors. I like those paper towels on the side to be able to rinse and dry my brush. Okay, I didn't like how dark it was, so I'm adding some more yellow to lighten up those oranges. The best thing about painting is you make it how you like it. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine. You do what you like. And just keep working it until you like the background. If you run out of paint, just grab some more so that you can work with it and keep blending. If your white sun has kind of lost its roundness, you can always go back, rinse your brush out, and put more white in there and make it a good perfect circle, however you like it. Okay, I'm just going to finish up some final touches here, blending in, and then I'm going to clean my brushes, rinse out my water cup, and we're going to start our next section of the painting. Okay, now that we've let that portion of our painting dry, um, you're need to going to pull out some more paints, the black and the white, these two greens, and when you remember when you go to put your paints onto your palette, remember to puncture them. So see, you can't get it out unless you puncture it. So puncture the tip, put them on your palette, and we'll get started with our next segment. 
Again, make sure that your paint is completely dry. Otherwise, when you start adding these new colors, it will blend in with the yellows and the oranges and change your colors of greens and the whites. Okay, so we have our, our wide flat and our smaller flat and our round. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose our, our smallest flat. I'm just gonna touch up my sun a little bit now that the paints are dry, make it a little bit more round, just because I had a few bumps in my circle. I'm also going to add some of those texture strokes going around the sun so that it looks like there's some sun rays. Some you can blend in or just leave the strokes there. It's kind of your preference what you prefer. Right now I'm just kind of blending them. I'm getting less paint on my brush as I work the outer rings so it blends in a little bit more to the background colors. You don't want to go too heavy handed or you will have to start all over again and paint that background again. All right, now we're gonna start on our grasses. We're gonna have different layers, and so we want to start with the lightest color green and make strokes going from the bottom upward and bring them up um, so that you have some that are taller than others, some that are shorter than others, and kind of give a variety of your different grass strokes. Some will be thin, some will be thick. Some will be tall, some will be at angles. Again, when you use a variety of those strokes, it makes it look better and more pleasing to the viewer's eyes. You'll continue using this green going all the way across the bottom. Again, you want to come up quite a bit of ways because we're going to be doing our next layer in a darker color and a little bit shorter. So make sure that this layer goes up high enough that you will be able to achieve those different layers of grasses. Remember, this doesn't have to be perfect. Just have fun. Have fun. Put a stroke here, put a stroke there, whatever you feel like. As you can see, I did not fill in every single thing. You can see some of the oranges and the reds and yellows poking through. That's okay. Because now with our second layer, again, this darker green is going to be a little bit shorter than this lighter green of the first layer. Um, again, you're doing some that are taller, some that are shorter, some that are thin, some that are thick. I like to throw in some different angles and it'll start filling in any of those other gaps. You do want to try to leave some of that light green showing in between so that you can see that there's different layers. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. 
just have fun with it. Put a stroke here, put some grass there. Whatever you feel like. Okay, now that we're almost done with this layer, you can see some of that lighter green poking through. Again, that shows the depth in your painting. So it's good to make sure you can see some of that. Okay, I covered a little bit too much dark, so I'm just coming back over with some of that light. So again, there's no mistakes. You can just have fun. Keep adding light, keep adding dark, whatever you like. Make sure you're always rinsing, rinsing out your brush in between each color. Okay, right here I'm mixing the darker green with some black. So this is going to create our next layer. With this layer we're not going to do it quite as tall. We're going to go a little bit shorter again. And we're not going to put as many grass strokes in this time. Again, this is showing the depth in your painting. Your darkest is going to be closest to you as a viewer. Again, these strokes, some will be taller, some will be shorter. You'll have some that are thin and wide. Always using a variety makes it look better. If they all look the same, it would start to look like a pattern. And you don't want pattern because this is supposed to be natural and look as natural as possible. Okay, now that we've let our grass layer dry, we are going to start working on our trees. Um, the brush that I'm going to choose to use is our small little round brush. And so if it happens to be stiff, just make sure you just push it into the paint a little bit and it'll soften it up. And we can go ahead and start painting trees. Now, I know trees can be kind of scary. Now, the best part about trees, trees do not grow straight. If you happen to look outside and see trees, you'll notice that they're kind of wavy and they're bumpy and they're lumpy and crooked. That's what makes this awesome to be able to do because, again, you don't have to be perfect. So choose a tree that you want to try to paint and we're going to start painting the trunks of the tree. So a good rule of thumb is to make sure you're using some trees that are thin some trees that are thick and all of them are going kind of in different directions some could be going you know more vertical some of them at a slant like this one i'm painting right now i decided to choose to paint it more at a slant um, another rule of thumb as you're painting your tree trunks is you'll notice that trees at the bottom are wider because that's where they grew up more so you want to make sure as you're creating these trunks wider at the bottom and then smaller going up towards the top. Uh, a lot of times I like to just get the main brush stroke down for where my trunk is going to be and then if I want to make it a thicker tree I can add thickness to it later after I've gotten my tree trunk in. Again you want to make sure it's kind of bumpy and lumpy so you don't want a perfect straight line. So the more wavy you can have it be, the more natural it's going to look. So if you're trying to create a perfect tree, then stop and just have fun. Let the bumps happen, let the waves happen, and create your fun trees.
because this brush is so thin you'll notice that you'll have to dip back into your black quite a bit that's okay just keep dipping keep making those tree trunks and just remember to have it thicker at the bottom wider and skinnier towards the top As you start using this brush more and more you'll notice that there might be some of the hair bristles that might fall out that's okay you can let it dry in the paint and pick out the bristle later or you can use a toothpick and try to get those bristles out with a toothpick if you try using your fingers a lot of times you'll smear the paint and you'd probably have to turn that smear into a branch Okay, this tree right here, I decided to make it a thicker tree, so I'm adding to it. Again, just double checking and making sure I'm making it thick at the bottom, thinner at the top, and making sure that I'm putting those bumps and those lumps in it. I'm adding some more black because I'm running out of paint. Okay, the closer you start getting to your sun, you want to make sure that you're not painting a tree directly right over top of your sun. So you want to have trees on each side of it. So it's kind of like a window, a window to this sunset. Okay, if you notice my trees so far, none of them are perfectly straight. None of them are straight, perfectly going up and down. They're slightly at an angle, going one direction or the other. When you do a variety of thin and thick trees, it makes it more pleasing to look at as a viewer. Some of your trees will be more favorite to you than other trees, that's okay. Just keep painting away, because next, once we're done with all of our tree trunks, we're gonna start working on our branches. This tree I am given a little bit more character to because again, trees are not perfect. And giving a little bit character to them, which means a little bit more crooked, a little bit more bumpy, I don't know, makes it fun. Okay, here I'm just cleaning off the bristles that are starting to fall off my brush. All right, we're ready to start our branches. Okay, branches. Again, they are the same way as the trunks. They're gonna be a little bit thicker, closer to the trunk of the tree, 
and then as they go out they're going to start to go thinner. Um, a lot of times I'll teach my students as they are starting to do their trunks of trees, think of creating a Y. Your main branch is attached to the trunk of the tree and then create the Y. Those are your smaller going off branch and then you can make another Y off of that Y. So just keep making Ys and that creates your different kinds of branches. Again, they are thin, they are thick, they are bumpy, they are lumpy. No perfect branches, just have fun with it. Make sure you go both directions because of course trees have branches going off to the right, have branches going off to the left. Don't be afraid to cross over other branches. Make sure you go to points, otherwise it'll look like your branches were cut off by a branch, another branch or a saw or something or it could have got broke off. So always go to a point. Uh, if you notice the smaller trees will have smaller branches. So keep that in mind. The bigger, thicker trees will have bigger, thicker branches. And again, remember your branches are going to have bumpies and lumpies, lots of curves in it. That makes it look more natural. Okay, this is my thicker tree, so I'm going to do a thicker branch. And usually those thicker branches are longer. The higher up on your tree, then they're not going to be quite as thick. Again, because your tree's tapering, going skinnier, that's the same thing with your branches. The higher they go up, the skinnier they get. Again, this is a skinnier tree, so I'm doing a skinnier branch. Okay, the reason why I'm rinsing my brush is because the paint was starting to get kind of goopy. So um, I was not getting as good strokes. So rinse your brush out often. Make sure you dry it and then get some more paint on and you'll be able to get that smooth flow again. Okay, as you're getting closer to the sun, you want to make sure that you're kind of framing around the sun so the branches you create will go above it and over it. That way you can still see your beautiful sunset. And just remember, the skinnier trees have skinnier branches. You'll notice some of my branches are going right off the top of your canvas board. Just have fun with your branches. Again, they don't have to be perfect. Wherever you feel like a branch needs to go, put that branch there. If you feel like you need to turn it into a Y at that spot, turn it into a Y at that spot. 
There's no perfect way to do it. Just have fun doing it. Okay, once you're close to finishing up your branches, just take another look at your branches and see, hmm, do I need a branch there? If so, add one. If not, then you're done and you'll be letting your trees dry before we move on to the next section. Okay, here I'm adding some small little grass that are just solid black. Remember the last layer of the grasses we did was black mixed with that darker green. So this is just given our last layer to show the depth in our painting. Again, these are the shortest grasses and it just shows shadow. You can just blend it right into your trees and in between your trees. Again, these grass strokes are just like the ones you did before. Some are longer, some are shorter, some are thicker, some are thinner. But make sure you can still see your darker green layer. You don't want to cover that all the way up. At the very base of my canvas board, I am making sure that it's solid black all the way across that. So you won't be seeing as much of the dark green in between these black grasses. Okay, we're about finished with this section. Um, just finish getting in your grasses. Um, love your branches where they are. And if you need to add more, add more. Make sure you rinse out your water again so that you have some fresh, clean water. Rinse out your brushes really good. And we're gonna get started on our leaves. Okay, now that our uh, trees and grasses have dried, we're going to need our yellow, our orange, and our red. Um, remember that our red we have not used yet, so you're going to want to use and puncture the top so that you can get paints out. Um, just put your paints right onto your palette again. You can put them in the same spots that you put them in before, or you can put them in new spots, whatever you prefer. Yep, you can see I haven't used red yet, so I'm going to puncture it. Okay, so we have our larger flat brush, our medium flat brush, and our round brush. Um, I am going to use black again, so make sure you put black onto your palette. And out of all the brushes, I'm going to choose the smaller of the flat brushes um, to work our leaves. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to be making and mixing our yellow and our orange together um, just to make a little bit lighter orange that is just slightly a little bit darker than our yellow. Um, our orange is so overpowering that you're going to have to add more yellow to it and just a little bit of the orange. Okay, the fun thing about leaves, when you start making your leaves, um, just have fun with it. They don't have to be perfect. And you're just going to dab here, dab there. Sometimes you'll dab on a tree, on a branch, and sometimes just right there on the orange color where there is no branch. And that's okay because as trees grow, there's lots of leaves everywhere because they're so full. Um, the thing about leaves in this particular painting, you have the sun as your light source. So all of your leaves that are going to be closest to your sun is going to be your lighter leaves because again the sun is shining on them more so it makes them lighter. As we start working our leaves um, we're going to start creating some darker leaves and they're going to be a little bit further away from the sun. So right now we're just working on our lighter leaves and as you notice I'm just turning my brush back and forth and around just so that those leaves can have a different angle or shape to it. They don't have to be perfect. You can see I'm just dabbing right onto my canvas. Some are thicker than others and wider than others. Just dab here, dab there, wherever you feel like. Wherever it feels natural. Again, most of these lighter leaves are going to be closest to the sun. So we're going to put a lot more going around the sun and on those trees closest to the sun. You still want to have some of those lighter leaves that are a little bit further away from the tree because yeah, the sun shines through those trees and every so often you'll see those lighter tree those lighter leaves a little bit here and there. So you want to make sure you have them all over, but most of them will be closest to the sun source. Okay, now I'm starting to go to just the straight orange. So you can see that my leaves are a little bit darker. So again, you do want to place them all over, but they're not going to be as many close to the, the sun, which is your light source. You'll have a few, but more of them are going to be a little bit further distance away. Again, you just kind of dab wherever you want, here and there. Some on the branches, some on the trees, some in between where there's no branches. Just wherever you feel like. Again, have fun with this. Don't stress about it. Just put a dab here, put a dab there. Whatever you feel like. You can see I'm making my leaves just a little bit thicker the further away from the sun with this orange color. And again, just a few here and there close to the sun. Okay, with our red, most of that red is going to be further away from the, tree, from the sun. And now I'm adding a little bit of black to my red and it will make kind of a burgundy color. These will be your darker, kind of more shadowy kind of leaves. These are going to be the ones that are going to be furthest away from your light source. You might have just a few that's close to the sun, but not as many. Again, you want to make sure your leaves are not directly right on the circle of your sun because, again, we want to leave that window open so that we can see that beautiful sunset. Okay, 
Okay, so most of these darker leaves, again, are the furthest away from that sun, and just a few here and there. Okay, my brush is getting a little gooped up, so I'm just rinsing it, drying it, trying to get all that sticky, goopy paint off, and then reload your brush with some paint. I need just a little bit more yellow. I noticed some of my leaves got a little bit dark, so I just want to lighten them up a little bit again. So as you make your leaves, if you got a little heavy-handed putting too many dark leaves somewhere or too many light leaves, just add some more. You want to make sure you can still see some of those branches because they're beautiful and they will peek in between all those leaves. And then just the solid yellow is like highlights on our leaves. You noticed I only did just a few of them in the darker side. Those are the ones that peek through the branches and a lot more closer to that sun. Okay, this is where you start fine tuning your, your leaves. Um, just kind of look and say, okay, does that look natural there? Uh, I need to let, add a little bit more dark here, or a little bit more light here. And again, just remember, the closer to the sun, the lighter the leaves, the further away from the sun, the darker the leaves. Just look at it, whatever looks natural. If you see something that doesn't look quite as natural, just fix it. Add what you need to add. So this is fine tuning it. I'm not going quite as fast now. Whoops, it's all right. I dropped my brush, not a big deal. Okay, now that we're all completely done with our painting, we want to take care of our supplies. So you want to get some fresh clean water and some regular dish soap, hand soap. Um, rinse your brushes out first, and then I like to get my hand just slightly wet, and then put some soap into your hand, and then make sure you're you're doing your brush back and forth enough that the bristles are bending almost all the way to the metal. That way you can get all the paint all the way to the very base that's right next to that metal. I'm using my fingers to make sure the paint is off the metal. Um, if you don't do this step, the paint can dry inside these bristles and then ruin your brush and you won't be able to use your brushes again. So just a little bit of soap, a little bit of water, I do it right in my palm, clean the metal part off and you'll be good to go with some new brushes. Make sure you do every single brush, all your flats, all your rounds, and then Take care of your, your equipment and they'll treat you good too so that you can paint with them again. Have fun and hope you enjoyed this painting segment and we will see you later.